You had one job. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, the left. We want to draw the graph of c equal to x y using double curves. Now, if we try to use the traces to draw this, for example, if we do say x z trace. <coughs> Well, what's going to happen? That means I'm setting y as 0, xz trace. And if you set y equal to 0, you end up with z equal to x times 0, which is a 0. So you get, you get a x and z. You get z equal to 0, which is just this line. So you, there's nothing interesting here. And same thing happens for, for yz trace. If you set x is 0, you again get this horizontal line. And then if you try the xy trace, that's a little more challenging. What's xy trace? That's setting z equal to 0, so you have 0 equal to x times y. Um, this means it's, it's either, if two things are multiplied to give you 0, then either one of them is 0. So for this to happen, either x is 0 or y is 0. So one of those two. Either x is 0 or y is 0. And x equal to 0 means the vertical line, this one, if this is x, that's y x equal to 0 is the vertical line, and then y equal to 0 is this horizontal line, so you get this. So in this case, none of the traces really give me any good idea of what this surface looks like. Okay? And therefore, for this question, it's absolutely necessary to know the level curves. Okay? Not just one, you, you probably want more than one, you need uh, several. So that's why I want to use the level curves to figure out the graph of fxy equal to xy. Uh, so let's do that. Okay. Actually, uh, xy trace is same as setting z equal to 0. So you can think of this as a z equal to 0 level curve. And then let's think about z equal to 1. So the level curve we want to think about is f of x, y equal to 1. If you set the function equal to 1, which means x times y is equal to 1, then you can solve this for y by dividing by x. You have this graph, y equal to 1 over x. Do you know the graph of this? Yeah, it's, uh, you, you, you saw this probably in junior high school as an inversely proportional graph, right? So x and y are inversely proportional. If x increases, y decreases. If, if x decreases, y increases. But uh, <coughs> when you come to pre-calculus, you extend the domain to the negative side. So you also have to think about what happens in when x is negative. Uh, when x is negative, y is also negative. So you end up with a graph in the third quadrant, because x and y are both negative. So that's the graph that you get. And then if you set fxy equals to 2, if f of x comma y is equal to 2, that's xy equals to 2, which means y is equal to 2 over x. And that's nothing more than uh, a similar type. It's just bigger numbers. So it's just further away from the origin than this one. Okay. Okay. Now let's think about the case when you have fxy equal to negative 1. In that case, you have x times y equal to negative 1, which is y is equal to negative 1 over x. If y is equal to negative 1 over x, that's the same as this graph. The only difference is minus. So over here, y was positive. For this one, when x is positive, y is negative. And effectively, what it does is that all the values of y become negated. 
goes to the negative side. So you, you get a graph that looks like this, and <coughs> which was negative. Negative of negative is positive, so it goes up. So you end up with the graph like that. Okay. So that's the graph for the level z equal to negative 1. And finally, if you have fxy equals to negative 2, that means x times y is negative 2, which means y is negative 2 over x. And the only difference from this one is that it's just further away from the origin. It's like further away. Now, <coughs> then what you want to do is put all these level curves together. Just put them all together on a single graph in the following way. First, when z is equal to 0, you get this. Z equal to 0. And also this. And then when z is 1, you get this graph. When z is 2, you get this graph. And uh, you can kind of predict what's going to happen. Uh, you can think about the next one, which is equal to 3. And on the left side, it's going to give you this for z equal to negative 1. <coughs> and this for z equal to negative 2. And furthermore, for z equal to negative 3. And when you have this graph, what you want to think about is the terrain map. Everyone here knows how to read the terrain map, right? Uh, terrain maps are basically these level curves, right? You have, what, what did you say? What did you say? It's a topographic map. Uh, it's a topographic map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's a topographic map. Um, and and uh, if you imagine yourself as a traveler in this strange world, uh, you would recognize that if you're trying to go this way, what are you, what's happening? Steeper. You're going up. It's getting steeper and steeper. Actually, I, I, I should have made the, these uh, distances smaller, but what happens is that these distances will become smaller and smaller, okay? which means it's rising up faster and faster, so it goes up steeper. Same thing happens over here. If you try to go there, it comes up steeper and steeper. And then, if you think about this z value as the sea level, uh, then it's like a strange terrain where you have two mountains, and over here, uh, these are under the sea. So if you go this way, you're, you're drowning. You're, you're drowning, immersing yourself in the water, and further away, like. Uh, six feet and then you're draw, drowning. Okay. So yeah. that's what's happening. And as, as you're going this way, that, that also happens. Okay. So using, using this, this level curve, it's very easy to figure out what the shape might look like. So let's use what we just figured <coughs> out to draw a three-dimensional picture. It's something like this over to the diagonal direction, in this direction, it's, uh, it's like this, right? It's probably going that way. Whereas on this direction, it's going down in a steeper and steeper way. And then it's something like this. So you might... Uh, Imagine this to be shaped like a part of a, a Pringles chip. You know, Pringles chip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this, this kind of surface has a name. Um, 
One name is that uh, these curves here, these are called hyperbolas. These are called hyperbolas. And also, if you look at it this way or that way, those are parabolas. So the name for this is hyperbolic parabola. That's one name. But there is another official name for this surface, which is easier to understand because it's a simple name. It's a saddle. That's another name given for this surface. So to think of about this surface as a saddle, it's more like this. You have like horses head this way, right? And it has its tail this way, right? And you're 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 like riding right here on the saddle. So that, that's called a saddle, okay? And this point where uh, the rate of change in both the, so, so it, this point right here, uh, now we, I, I haven't talked about uh, the derivatives of a multivariable function yet, so I can't explain what this, what what the special property this point enjoys is, but uh, this this point here is a place where both the x derivative and the y derivative is zero. I'm going to talk about that later when we do the partial derivatives. And uh, because on one side it's it's like a maximum. If you view it on, on this side, it's like a maximum, whereas if you view it this way, it's like a minimum. Uh, and, and therefore, such a point is called a saddle point. A saddle point is, it, it's like a, a point where if you cut it in one direction, it's like a maximum. Right? If you cut it in another di direction, it's like a minimum. So that, that already shows us how complicated this problem of optimizing a multivariable function is. Okay? For a single variable function, finding out whether it's a uh, maximum or minimum is easy. You just figure out the critical numbers, and uh, I mean, it could either be relative max or relative min. There was this one uh, annoying case where the, it's a critical number, the derivative is zero, but it's just uh, momentarily stopping and going up again. Uh, but other than this, Usually you got a relative max or relative minimum, right? But in the multivariable case, there are many cases where you have a saddle point, which is neither a max or a min. So uh, that will be a, a topic that we will have to handle in, later, okay?